right, so let's get back now to one of the big stories in the market. That is Japan. Its market, as you heard Bob talk about, is one of the main causes for the sell-off. And after a red-hot start to the year, Japan's stock market posting its worst day since October 20th, 1987. That sell-off triggering at least part of the global route that we've seen over the past 24 hours. Kyle Bass is founder and CIO of Heyman Capital Management, warning investors about Japan's economy, specifically regarding its currency and the yen. Kyle, welcome. I feel like we've we got to stop doing this on, on nights like this. Uh, I'm going to go to Japan in just a second, but I want to follow up on what Steve was just hitting on. The bond market, the bullies in the bond market, they've already been pushing around interest rates. Is the bond market trying to do the work of the Federal Reserve right now? You know, there's a, there's a more technical answer to this, Brian. And, and uh, late last year, um, you saw... That you saw the way the government funds itself go from bonds to bills. And I know that that sounds like an arcane idea, but what that did is it released another $2 trillion-ish of, of liquidity into the market going into the elections. And one can think that these bodies are apolitical, but I can tell you that uh, knowing what's gone on behind the scenes, I can tell you that there have been some political currents going on there. And, and therefore, now the cries for uh, intermediate cuts are coming. Remember, Back in uh, 2000, Greenspan in mid-December announced that he was probably going to cut uh, at their January meeting, and it forced him to cut 50 basis points inter meeting on January 3rd, 2001. So that even if the Fed's not intending to cut, here's what happens. They, they say they don't care about the stock market, but every time one of them talks on television, they go watch what the stock market does as a result of them talking. Uh, and so if if the stock market rolls over, and high-end consumption collapses, which is likely to happen, uh, then you have the whole economy rolling over because it's high-end consumption holding the economy up. Uh, and you know that, will, that would make the Harris win less likely. So I think you can expect some aggressive Fed cutting between now and the November election. Okay, you went there, and it's uh, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna follow up with that as well, Kyle. How much because you know the internet mob is out there blaming this on election cycle potential changes, and I will get to Japan in a second. How much, if any, of this move is politically related? I mean, the move so far, Brian, is just, is just the fact that all of the liquidity that was pumped into our markets post-COVID uh, has kind of played its course. Uh, you know, you had the Fed increasing its balance sheet by, uh, you know, literally from $4 trillion to $9 trillion. Uh, we expanded the money supply by 40% in 18 months, Brian. It's no wonder we had record high stock prices and asset prices. Then we went from funding by bonds to bills, and the Treasury general account and the, and the overnight reverse repo at the Fed put in another $2 trillion of, of uh, uh, fuel to the fire. And now that fuel's kind of burning off, and now you're seeing things turn. Uh, we all looked at each other and said, hey, the Fed raised rates you know, to 5.5%. You know, why hasn't the economy uh, slowed down? It's because the, the kind of the powers that be were pushing a lot of liquidity into the markets. Well, now that liquidity is no longer here. So, Brian, this is a natural result uh, of, a, of an unnatural situation where the Fed has been extremely accommodative and the Treasury and Congress have spent like drunken sailors. And now kind of the time to pay the pipers here. And there's a liquidity gap. Um, I think you're going to see. Um, uh, cuts, aggressive cuts between now and year end. You know how markets work, and you get all the stuff, the carry trade, let's borrow Japan, we're going to buy here, we're going to short vol, short volatility, that's all on what you get the mechanics, right? You can rebuild the engine. For 99.9% .9 of people watching and listening right now, it's not what they do for a mm. living. Can you explain to them how these rather sort of obscure moves in Japanese currency can see somebody like in Davenport, Iowa, lose 10% of their investments because hedge funds are doing all these things with currencies and, and borrowing against, against them. You know, I'm not going to blame hedge funds. What's more important, Brian, is the people of Japan. You have a, a government that had, that had actually taken their country into what I call the Keynesian endpoint. You, you have a point in time in which you have so much borrowing on balance sheet and you've got a currency and you've got this unholy trinity where you're trying to hold your currency in place, you're trying to hold your interest rates in place, and everything in the world is priced in dollars, and the, and the United States exports 
50% inflation to you in dollar terms over the last three and a half years, what do you do? Well, you have to pretend that you can raise rates, but you actually can't raise rates. Your currency, the Japanese currency, has gone from basically 100 to 160. So if you're a Japanese saver, you've lost 60% of your ability to buy things in that move. And to compensate for that, the Japanese stock markets come up with you. But now you've had the Japanese yen go from 160 to 145 in a nanosecond, and you've had the Japanese stock market drop from 42,000 to 31,000 in a month. Mm. You've seen a 25% decline in the stock market in a month. You saw their market go from plus six to minus six in one day today. Uh, and that's because, again, like this massive trade is unwinding, but it's it's not necessarily hedge funds. It's the savers of Japan. It's what Japan does. Uh, uh, they they go uh, buy dollars and they invest in dollar yeah. assets with their money, fearful of the fact that they're going to lose more of their purchasing power in yen. And then when that trade unwinds, they have to panic and close everything out. And that's what you're seeing going on, coupled with the fact that the U.S. economy is certainly rolling over.